Hi guys, Adam from I2RC here. Well, if you came for some high speed RC running videos, sorry, something a little different today. It's been a bit wet outside and I haven't been able to get the cars out much, but I got bored the other day and decided I'd like to make one of these. Yes, I do need all of that, which I've built before and I'll go through that equipment, but I do like the body shell and I usually design my own little cars and hence I, why I've made some vacuum forming boxes. Um, but I wanted before I destroyed this one to actually make one and get a copy of it so I could have an endless supply so to speak. Um, now today I'll only be making it out of uh, this 1mm PETG only because it's what I've got lying around and it saves a lot of time. If I was to use polycarbonate like I did with that one, uh, it would take a lot longer with heating. Um, I have to warm the polycarbonate first to get all the moisture out of it. I think polycarbonate's what they call hydroscopic, so it uh, contains moisture and will suck moisture in from the air. So you've got to dry it uh, for a good, for a one mil sheet, probably a good 30 to 40, 50 minutes. Um, at a lower temperature just to dry and get all the moisture out. Then you've got to heat it for probably 15 minutes to get it to its right temperature and then form for this video a couple of minutes with this and it should be done. I'm going to do it as much as I can in real time, hence the head camera, um, just to show you how easy it actually is. And I'm really happy the way it's turned out. All right, so without further ado, first you're going to need the original body shell. This is what you're going to make your mold out of. Um, ideally, first what I did is starting to tape up. You're going to pour plaster in this. So what I like to do, and this is not going to be gospel everyone, this is just the way I do it. Um, I know there's probably lots of other ways and people will be looking going, well I've done it this way and it's a lot easier. Well it probably is. I just found this to be my easiest way. So start by taping up your wheel wells and any of the holes, tape up your um, your body post holes um, and you want to keep doing this all around the body. Now I'm not going to go into all of this, obviously real time won't be including the drying of the plaster and pouring the plaster, but you want to tape it all up um, and you want to go quite high above the side because you'll be pouring your plaster you're going to want it over this level, obviously. To get it over that level, you're going to need to build up the wall. Now, also the walls, this is going to be very floppy. Um, the tape, obviously, is going to be really floppy and the plaster weighs quite a bit and it will deform. So, this is where you need to support it all. I'll get rid of Italian. This is where, before you pour your plaster, you're going to want to support it. So imagine I've taped up the whole lot. Um, I've used a box in this case and I've got kind of supports under there to support the nose of it, to support the back of it and the roof. Now I also put a sheet of foam in there just so the roof didn't push down. If you set it on the ground, it will give it a flat roof. You can see that bending there. So you want to make it kind of cushioned, but still firm. Um, and I also sort of shove things down the side here to keep the sides in you know a clamp and a couple of bits of wood would probably do the trick a lot better um, this was just what i did for this one basically once you've got that all set nice and firm you can push down and feel it's not drooping in too much i mean the the weight of the um, plaster itself will um, sort of you know keep it relatively tight uh, but it will and you want this to sort of overflow now when i did my pour um, oh i'll go to the plaster Plaster of Paris is all I used. This is a three kilo bag and I probably mixed, uh, I think it's about two litres of water per three kilo bag. So six kilos of plaster for this one and four litres of water. Mix it up. That's very handy. Mix it all really, really well because you want it as smooth as possible and it'll help with curing. And let's just deconstruct this. You've poured it. Now, you should wait for two hours, I think, before popping it out of its mould. 
I did a little less because I'm impatient. Also, wait for it to dry because it's going to contain moisture. 24 hours to 48 hours best. I did this in a day, so uh, I was just impatient. I did break the back of it. I had to fix there when I did the pour because I was impatient taking the first mask uh, mold off. But in theory, that's what you're going to have when you release and it's all dry. A nice solid piece. Now, I didn't pour as much plaster as I would have liked. It only went up to just above the body shell itself. Um, so I've added a couple of sheets of plaster at the bottom just to give it a little bit more height. That'll help with forming. If the form has a little bit of a curve, at least you're below the cut marks. But this one came out really quite nice. I've added a little bit down the bottom here where um, as you want to release the mold, you don't want any overhanging parts too much. And because of the nature of my tape, it did buckle in there a little bit. Um, but, so I filled a couple of those overhanging bits that were unnecessary. But she's come up all right. Now, once you've got your mold, this is what I think everyone's really interested in, the vacuum forming process. Uh, so, basically, you're gonna need a vacuum box. I've made a couple there. Obviously, size for different sort of ones. This is the one for the 1 7 Mojave, a lot bigger. Um, but essentially, they're a box. Basically, you just want an airtight box. Um, I've made that one out of pine, and this one was out of MDF. MDF does have, it is porous, so air will get through it slightly. So I've just taped this up with some aluminium tape, um, the box to keep it a bit more airtight. Also, there's silicon in between all the joins before they screw, I screwed it on um, to keep it airtight. Basically, that box, I've got two vacuum cleaners going into either side, just in holes. This one's about a 2000 watt, nice and powerful little vac. And this one's a house vac that just goes to the ducted system, about 1200 watts. So a little bit of power going in there, probably not necessary. Uh, I haven't tried it with less, I just tried it with this first time. Uh, and this seems to be my good suction system. So that box is airtight and the two vacs going into either side. Um, obviously at the top, also siliconed on um, and this has I've just gone with a central hole I found I've practiced with the multi holes the pegboard design style I prefer this design it's a lot simpler straight hole drilled straight through the middle that's the only way this suction can escape um, I've got some little holes here for another form I did but they're not really necessary uh, they're only small as well but the central hole I think works well now obviously, um, this box now has a frame, this frame around it. Now that really is only to support the frame that I've got hinged on the top there, which I'll get to. And we'll get to that in a minute, which height to have that. This is basically two frames that bolt together. And that is to hold your plastic. This bottom frame, as you can see, as that comes down, the height there is kind of perfect. Once your plastic sits in there, it's going to touch this, which is just a multi-seal for windows and doors. Um, it's not the porous type, it is a rubber, so because you want a good vacuum seal when the plastic runs over. Hence why the height of that frame is just below that height. Well, quite a bit below, but <laughs> at least five mil but that doesn't matter as long as your plastic can sit in there. Now the other frame, this is the best way I've seen to keep your plastic in place. Um, uh, as I said, I've, I've hinged this on here and I'll explain that in a minute because, um, oh, well basically you want this to come down as smooth and as flush as possible always over. You don't want it wobbling around and if, if you had to manually put it down, there's all this sort of movement. Some people have supports upright. I found the hinge system is just so much easier. All right, so this frame, then this has got bolts going through it, will sit straight over those as such. And you start to see what's happening there. This is to basically support your plastic. So we'll go and put my 
Now, as I said, this is PTG, which is nowhere near as strong as polycarbonate, but it is very easy to form. And for the, this process, uh, it's gonna show you what happens, and I'm gonna do it pretty quickly. Polycarbonate, it's just the drying time, and quite frankly, I'll get to the heaters now. They're about 2,000 watts each, just radiator heaters. There's four of those, so as you can see, there's 8,000 watts I'm drawing. If I had to leave that on for hours just to do one body shell, I may as well go and buy one. The power it's using is, is gonna be pretty extreme. Um, in this case, these heaters go on for about two minutes. Two minutes for about the, for the one mil PETG, for two mil that I like using. Once you use a two mil PETG plastic with, um, with the shoe goo and drywall tape routine, that's uh, quite a strong body shell. I've, I've found them pretty good. Still nowhere near as tough as polycarbonate, but hey, it's cheaper and quicker, and this is what we're talking about, uh, and making your own. So, my plastic, I've drilled holes just using the um, frame here to line up the hole marks. And that just slips over that one. Then your outer frame slips over this one. And you can see that I've got a nice support. Now I've just got butterfly. Oh, trying to do this as quick as possible. It is quite a speedy process once you've got your timing right and your heat is right at the right distance. Uh, so while I do these up, the heater system, it is important to have a nice even distribution of heat. So I know they look like they've just sort of been thrown in there. Um, I have actually sort of made them wider and closer and, and had them at it this way at one stage, but it was just not heating the plastic evenly. Um, and eventually I sort of, I mean, obviously with the reflection inside there, they're pushing the heat nicely. Um, what I've also done, as you can see, is just backed the whole lot with tin foil. Um, I found the tin foil, all it's gonna do is direct the heat this way. You're not gonna lose any of the heat outward. So um, it makes a big difference to keep your heat. Obviously, as you can see here, bits start melting because it gets quite hot in there, but at least it's not an oven system. Uh, which those heaters would never survive. Um, so the foil and just around the edges just directs the heat uh, and doesn't let it escape from behind. And that's what you want. You want to get this, I think it's about 170 degrees Celsius to, uh, to form it properly, um, only for about two minutes. You don't want it too hot, obviously to melt, but you'll see that in real time. All right, all those screws are done up. As you can see, make sure you've got it around the right way. Yes, I've got the protective film on this side. That would have been embarrassing. Uh, all right, so such, as you can see, my hinge system now, this is why I like the hinge system. I can manipulate this however I want as well, but that hinge system will allow me to get this close however much I want, so I could have, I can, uh, I did a lot of experimenting with distance at the moment. I mean, I'm quite happy with that sitting there. From the heater grill, it's about 10 inches. Um, it is going to warm a little bit more at the top, obviously, heat rises, so it's going to come out and up, so this will get hotter. I've had a lot of issues with my bigger one with getting the heat all the way to the sides and having even um, this is the Porsche design for the Mojave. Uh, but this is exactly the same system. The frame goes on top. My um, plastic is actually put in place with these on that first and then bolt it to this. Uh, only reason being is um, I've shortened this before. All right, so now that's all set. As you can imagine, you grab your mold and sit him as central as you want. Now that's just a flat bit at the bottom. You want to sit it right in the center there. And this I found is a pretty good size for this system. All right, once that's there and you've got 
These all connected, I've just put a bit of tape around here just to stop any air escaping in case it's not perfectly tight. Doesn't hurt. Um, but as you can see, it's ready to turn on. So, on with the heaters and start my timer. Now, as I said, this will only take two minutes. Uh, a good idea, a good thing to do at the moment, even though the plaster isn't too bad, I like to rub it down with a bit of good old fashioned vegetable oil. Um, that'll help the um, plastic remove a lot easier. Uh, don't use WD-40 or anything else on plaster, it's going to eat it away. Uh, vegetable oil on mine seem to, seem to do the trick and been pretty safe and the cast filled up quite well. You can see that's probably that's still quite hard at the moment after 45 seconds. If my mould was solid like that one, the form will happen quite quick once the suction starts. This has got some air through it in between the um, plasterboard and the mould, so it'll form quite slowly, which will give you a good chance to see uh, exactly what's happening. Um, so don't panic, just leave the, as long as you've got suction around here, um, it will form. That's the one of the beauty of uh, PETG. Um, it does give it a bit of time to form. Also, I've wiped down this side. I've removed the clear film, obviously, from this side, because that's the side I'm going to paint, left it on the back. You can see that's getting quite soft now. So it's probably not far, that's at a minute 30. Probably not far from forming. Um, you can see it's quite floppy and stretchy. So I'd say on with the vacuums. And they'll be pulling air from inside there. About a minute 50. I think we're probably gonna be pretty good. Here he goes. And down she sucks. We'll turn our heaters off. I'll leave the back end going just for a little bit while it cools down. You can see that's formed really quite nicely around there. Should be right to turn the back ends off. I found, I found PETG to be quite good at um, forming and then keeping its shape pretty quickly. I don't think I need the vacuums on anymore without it deforming. It cools down quite quick, but you can see that sucked in really nicely around there. And one of the beauties with the hinge system um, is if I put this cast or the mould around the right way, when I lift off, it should be as simple as Pushing down a little bit, he says, bit of a shake, and voila, one body shell, and she doesn't look too bad. Okay, then all it is, is undo the screws. They're all done, undone. This is what I like about the frame system. Frame, top comes off. And the plastic comes out. And voila. One body shell, not badly formed. All it is to do is cut it out. I don't think I need to show you how to do that. Um, and obviously, don't forget to peel off the top coat. It's come up nice. There you go, guys. Hopefully that explains it. Mm -hmm.